Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Into Suffolk Wednesday webinar. Our topic today is Boston Off-Campus Living Support. So this webinar is a perfect fit for you if you are coming into Boston and you need to find some amazing off-campus um, living options, whether that's a house, an apartment, finding roommates, and more. We have some special guests here today. I'm going to actually let them introduce themselves first. Uh, Sergeant Sweet, if you could introduce yourself first. Oh, and you're muted right now. The beauties of Zoom. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Uh, yeah, I'm Matt Sweet uh, with the Suffolk University Police um, in the Crime Prevention Investigations Unit. Uh, my primary role here at the University Police Department is, you know, providing resources for all students, staff, and faculty, um, and help them in any way they may need. Um, and obviously, in this um, specific instance, it would be the Boston um, off-campus living support. So when it's my turn, I'll have a nice PowerPoint for everyone and provide some information. Well, thank you. Our other guest today is Shigeo. If you could introduce yourself next. Yes, so my name is Shigeo. Um, you can just call me Shigeo. You don't have to call me Shigeo Iwamiya or anything because there's not very many Shigeos on campus. Um, I am the Director of Residence Life and Housing Services here on campus, um, and I oversee on-campus housing, meaning residence halls and dorms, as well as off-campus housing. So I'm here to talk a little bit about how to find your off-campus apartment and search for those things as well. And when it's my turn, I'll tell, talk to you a little bit about some tools to use like websites and all those other kind of things that you can help navigate and search for safe apartments as well. Thank you both. Before we let our presenters uh, talk about their subject areas, I do have a few small reminders for all of our new students. So as I went, we mentioned earlier, today's presentation will be about off-campus housing, you're going to learn about resources such as um, where to find off-campus apartments, understanding what a housing scam is, learning about the LiveSafe app, and of course, our off-campus housing portal. As always, um, we hope that you have questions, so please type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself if you feel comfortable asking your questions to the larger group. Because this is part of our orientation preparation, we do have orientation trivia facts throughout today's webinar. And these facts will come up again during orientation, which will begin synchronously on August 31st. Presenters, you are also welcome to participate. Our first orientation trivia fact is this question. Which famous movie was filmed in Massachusetts? Does anyone have any guesses? This could be any famous movie that was filmed in Massachusetts. So when you're moving to Boston, when you watch this movie, you might recognize some of the landscapes from this area. Because it's the summer, I'm gonna give you this one. It's a freebie. The answer is Jaws. So when you move to Boston, please make sure to visit our beautiful beaches. We're right on the Atlantic Ocean. There are sharks here. It is very, very rare for sharks to attack people, but you can spot a shark or two if you're lucky when you visit the beaches near Boston. Okay, now to the serious stuff, which is into Suffolk reminders. So this presentation is part of a weekly Wednesday webinar series. Today's presentation is off-campus living and support. Next week's presentation is equally important, and that is understanding U.S. healthcare and immunization records. So if you have never been to the U.S. before and you do not know what health insurance is, or if you are someone that takes medication or you have a prescription and you wanna better understand how to get access to those medications and healthcare services in the U.S., please attend our presentation next week. We will be sending reminders every week about these webinars, but this is the schedule, and I will be sharing this PowerPoint with all of our attendees after today's presentation. Our other reminders before we get started in our off-campus presentations is regarding orientation. 
All new into Suffolk students are required to attend orientation. We have an online orientation course that you will get an email about with more information about how to access. That online course, you are required to complete it by August 30th. We also have an in-person orientation that begins Tuesday, August 31st. And that's when I get to meet you in person. So make sure to come and say hi. Another reminder we have for our brand new students is that before you begin your classes, you are required to submit your immunization or health care records to the university. We will talk in more detail about how to do this during next week's webinar. And then my final reminder for you all is that our university is requiring that all students, staff, and faculty are vaccinated for COVID-19 by August 16th. So if you have any questions about this requirement, or if you're not able to get vaccinated by August 16th, please contact me. I'll make sure to provide my email at the end of today's presentation. And we'll be actually able to offer you an option to arrive earlier to get vaccinated. And that program is called the Into Early Welcome. More details about this program um, will be emailed to you throughout this summer. If you're interested in our Into Early Welcome, which is once again a program where you arrive earlier to get your COVID-19 vaccine, there is a deadline to apply and that deadline is coming soon. So the deadline to apply for this program is July 15th. And once again, if you have any questions about any of these reminders, please email me and I'll provide my email at the end of today's webinar. Uh, for our new students as well, my last, last reminder for you is to submit your airport arrival details after you have booked your flight into Boston. This is extremely important because then my team knows when you're coming um, some of our students are able to request free taxi service from the airport to their living um, spaces. So if you're interested in any of these services, you are required to complete our airport arrival form. I promise you it takes less than three minutes to complete, but make sure that you complete this form after you have booked your flights into Boston. Okay, so our next step in today's webinar is actually a presentation from Sergeant Sweet about Suffolk University Police Department's services towards students that are looking for off-campus housing. And make, I'll make sure that I give you um, hosting permission so you can share your screen as well. All right, sounds good. Okay, should be good to go. All right, let's see how it goes. Oh, you see um, the yep. PowerPoint? All right, perfect. Oh, now we see your beautiful baby. Oh, perfect. Uh oh. <laughs> all right, better? Yes, we can see all of it. Awesome. Oh, we see the presenter view, if that makes it. <laughs> um, students are getting such good sneak peeks. Yes, they are. Much better, right? Yes. All right, perfect. So first of all, I'd like to say welcome to Suffolk. Um, so we're going to start with a little about um, our department. Um, our department operates in three divisions. Um, we have the police division, um, basically our police officer here to enforce all mass general law um, and to include call rules and policies. Um, we also have a security division. Our security division is usually posted um, at primary locations such as dorm rooms um, and other you know, high traffic buildings. Um, they're also able to enforce university rules and regulations and deter criminal activity, but thankfully we're in a very safe area. So we don't have much to worry about on that front. Um, then we also have dispatchers. Um, they're basically, the, when you call us, you talk to them first. Um, just a heavy reminder that I'd like to point out is when you call SUPD for anything that you may need, just be sure that you have all the information as possible um, so that we can send you the appropriate resources. Um, where we're located, we're currently located at our main stations at 148 Cambridge Street. It's in the Ridgeway building on the fourth floor. Um, and our actual dispatch center is operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 a year. Um, and that's located at 120 Tremont Street. And uh, we'll go along. So some common scams on the off-campus housing front, um, some big red flags um, that we Sorry, see. Sorry, I want to interrupt. I have a quick question. Could you sure. briefly describe what is a scam? 
for our students who may not have heard this word before. Sure. So a scam is basically something that someone will offer you and not have a legitimate purpose behind it. Um, so kind of segue with that. To, for an example, it'd be like, you know, you see a rent for an apartment that's, you know, $700 a month, but other apartments are in the area that may be, um, you know, 3000 and you go and <clears throat> speak with somebody about that um, apartment and you come to find out it's not even in a real apartment. Um, so that'd be a typical scam that we see. Um, and then another, uh, another one that we kind of segue to is they request a wire money. Most legitimate landlords don't ask renters to wire money to any account, um, especially an account located outside of the United States. Um, nor do they ask for money, you know, by Western Union, MoneyGram, or any other money transfer service. Um, another one that we're running into that's starting to pop up as well um, is getting the request to use another listing service or escrow account to transfer the money. Um, sometimes they impersonate legitimate listing services such as Airbnb and home away. Um, they request the money sent to an escrow account to make the uh, renters believe that they're dealing with a legitimate entity. Um, that you kind of can see. Um, a good way to combat that would be, say you want to rent an apartment at 148 Cambridge Street, apartment number three, and you Google it and you notice that it's on Zillow for X amount of money and then it's on this person's site um, or Airbnb for a different um, amount of money and or to be like a vacation home and things don't really add up, um, that would be a good red flag to look out for as well. Um, and then there's people that also claim to have affiliation with our university. Um, I haven't personally seen it, but I, I've seen it across the state um, where they personate Suffolk University websites saying like, yeah, you know, rent with us, Suffolk University approved us, we're legitimate. Um, if you have any questions on that, please reach out um, to our department, Sophie or Shigeo, and um, we can definitely, you know, validate the legitimacy of that. And most of the time, landlords will meet you in person, if not 100% of the time. They usually allow you to tour the property before asking you to put a deposit to secure the rental. Um, to kind of go back to Sophie's question, um, if they want you to rent um, an apartment while you're here, and they don't let you see it before, that might be a red flag for a scam as well. Um, so just always keep that on the forefront. Um, well, so now, one more thing as sorry. well. Uh, for everyone on this call, we will be showing you the legitimate uh, website that Suffolk approves of to find off-campus housing. So don't worry, we will show you how to access that website and what it looks like. Over oh, back to you, Matt. Thanks. Um, so the Massachusetts Attorney General's office, they really they released a really great student renter's guide. Um, I kind of broke it down and threw it into the PowerPoint. Um, and it breaks it down into sections as like before you sign, signing the lease, moving in, moving out, and things like that. So they hit really the great points. So I'll go through those now. So before you even sign any paperwork, make sure you talk to the landlord, um, neighbors, and other tenants around the unit. Make sure it's legitimate. Drive to a drive-by if you can. Make sure it's an actual building. Um, some people will post fake postings on there's no real fixed address to that location. Um, never hesitate to ask the landlord questions. Uh, how much is the rent? Who pays utilities? Do you, do, uh, does the um, landlord, um, et cetera. And like I said, look at the apartment, make sure you can actually walk through, make sure it's in a legitimate building, safe area up to your standards. So after you sign, you're getting all happy or we're, actually we're getting to the signing portion now. Um, you wanna read that signing portion carefully. Um, you are bound by it legally. Make sure it has everything that you and the landlord discussed, um, whatever you know, accommodations he or she have made for you. Um, make sure you understand the terms that you sign. Um, if it's a 12 month lease, 24 month lease, if there's a rent increase, things like that. Um, never agree to something that's not on the lease. Um, make sure the lease always says who's paying for each utility that will include electricity, water, heat, uh, sometimes sewer. Um, I don't live in Boston, so I'm not sure how that works here for different utilities. Um, but make sure you, uh, you and the landlord um, agree with that as well, um, each of those utilities. Always keep a signed copy. Um, your landlord legally has to give you the copy of it within 30 days. Um, usually, I would assume as you sign it, they have a separate copy that you sign and have it witnessed. 
Um, <clears throat> make sure you get all the landlord promises in writing. Like say you want a new door lock, you want a creaky door fixed or a, a drafty window fixed and they promise you they'll fix it prior to moving in, make sure you get that in writing. Um, and if you can't put that inside your lease as well. Um, well, the most landlord can charge when you move in is first month's rent and last month's rent and a security deposit up to the amount of the first month's rent. Um, and you have the right to get a receipt every time you give the landlord money. Um, that's another thing, just keep a copy of all receipts and all bank records um, of you pulling money out or how, how are you and the landlord you know, discuss and agree on transferring money um, for that. So now you're great, you're moving in. Uh, if you pay a security deposit, you're entitled to a statement of condition. Um, that means that will list any problems with the unit at the time you move in if they weren't remedied prior. Um, if you do not pay a security deposit, write down all the things in the unit that need repair. Otherwise, the landlord may hold you responsible. Uh, maybe a leaky uh, kitchen sink, and maybe, like I said, a drafty window, maybe with a full board's lifting up. Make sure you note that and notify your landlord so they can't um, hold you responsible for that. And the best way to do that is take pictures to document the apartment's condition. Um, everyone has smartphones now, so that's definitely the best way to do it. Um, so now after you're moved in, you're living in your home, um, you have the right to have a safe and habitable unit. The landlord is responsible for keeping a unit in good condition. So if your fridge um, happens to go and you no longer have a cold fridge or, you know, your toilet stops working, your landlord should be able to help you out with getting that fixed. Um, and you should definitely report them to your landlord um, in writing. Um, that way, like I said prior, you have a copy of all correspondence of you and your landlord. It is illegal for the landlord to retaliate against you for asking for repairs or for calling the health inspector. Um, if the landlord refuses to make repairs, you have a right to get a free inspection by a local health inspector. Um, and I put up here the contact for the attorney general's office, um, reference the student renter's guide. Um, so that'll be here for you. And another common scam we see is for employment postings. Um, there might be a random flyer on a a, a pole outside on a, on a walking down the street and they'll say like call this number and you'll have a job we pay this x amount of money with no company name so that'd be a red flag so that'd be the first bullet point they don't indicate a company name um if you do a little bit of research and it has an uh, email address and you google the email address and it doesn't come back to the company name they provided um that might be a red flag as well um, if the employer does not give contact information, um, like title of the person sending the email, company address, phone number, et cetera, um, they offer to pay a large amount of money for almost no work. Um, that sounds great in theory, but un un <laughs> realistically, it's uh, unrealistic. Um, they offer you a job without interacting with you. Most jobs will offer you an interview um, if you choose to work off campus um, or off hours. Um, they ask to pay you an application fee. That's unheard of um, in Massachusetts. Um, they want you to transfer money from one account to another. They offer to send you a check before you do any work. Um, ask for copies of personal documents. They say you must send a payment to a wire service or carrier. Offers you a large payment for allowing the use of your bank account, often for depositing checks or transferring money. Um, if anyone ever offers you a large payment for allowing the use of your bank account, uh, I would immediately report that either to us or your local police department. Um, in this case, it'd be Boston police. Um, that That's a bigger issue um, than just a scam, unfortunately. So if that ever comes across your way, please let us know and uh, we'll send you the appropriate resources. Um, if you get an unexpectedly large check for doing no work, um, that's also another red flag. Um, no legitimate employer will send payment in advance and ask the employee to send a portion of it back. Uh, do not provide any personal information, especially social security numbers or financial information. Um, now, to go back on that last point, if you get hired at a, you have decided to do employment off campus and it's a legitimate place, they will ask for your social security number um, and you know bank information to send your money. Um, but if it's, it's a really weird ad and you don't feel comfortable, um, definitely reach out to us or other resources and uh, we can uh, assist you in that if need be. Uh, another scam that's 
currently ramping up again um, is the Internal Revenue Service um, IRS scams. So basically someone will call you on a random number and they'll call to demand immediate payment. Um, like say, uh, give me $500 through Venmo or they'll say through a debit or credit card or wire transfer. They'll say you haven't been paying your taxes and they'll send immigration officers or bring local police uh, or have you arrested or deported. Um, the IRS will never call you. Um, they will always send you letter mail. Um, so if you receive any of those calls, please call us, um, please call Boston Police, and we will assist you in reporting that. Um, I, just, I can't stress that enough because um, it, it's, it's a very, very high volume scam, uh, especially this time of year. Um, and like I said, I, I can't reiterate it enough. Um, the IRS will never call you. They will send you letters if there really is an issue. Um, and then how to report scams. Uh, report scams immediately and with as much detail as possible. If you have copies of the communications with the potential scammer and money transfer details, that's great. Um, you can report it to us. Um, here's our non-emergency number and our email. Um, you can report it to the student university or Suffolk University Student Affairs. Um, that's their phone number and email, as well as Res Life and Housing, and that's their um, email as well. Um, this is just some federal um, places you can report it to. Um, we can do that on your behalf as well. It's going to be the Internet Crime Complaint Center um, with that URL, uh, the Federal Trade Commission with that URL. And then if you had, a, if you chose to transfer money uh, through Western Union or MoneyGram, it ended up being a scam. Um, there's two sets of uh, complaint procedures there for each uh, business, Western Union and MoneyGram, to help get that process going to get your money back and while still reporting it to us so we can help you on our end as well. Um, some off-campus safety. Um, always lock your doors and windows when leaving your residence. Always keep valuables in sight when in public spaces and areas. Always be aware of your surroundings when traveling around the city. Always travel in populated and well-lit areas. If you're traveling at night, uh, make sure you go where all the streetlights are in main areas if possible, main streets. Um, Always have emergency numbers and contacts pre-programmed on your phone. Um, I highly suggest having our emergency number and our non-emergency number programmed in your phone under your favorites. Um, so you can contact us a little bit quicker than trying to search through it. Um, and we'll, we'll pull those up in a couple next slides. Um, always have a backup plan in case of emergencies, such as a lockout, fire, things like that. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to muster and meet your friends? And of course, know your area. Boston's a big city. Um, and you want to make sure that you're in an area that you know is good for you and your friends. Um, and you want to learn these areas and to see what areas are obviously safest for you. Uh, Boston has a great um, digital platform for reporting non-emergency issues, including housing concerns. It's called Boston 311. You can download it right to your phone. You can even tweet it at BOS311, or you can call on your phone uh, 311. Uh, so if you have, like I said, any housing concerns, non-emergency issues, or anything concerning that you think should be addressed by the city um, that are non-emergency matters, um, that would definitely be a great route to take. Um, some services provide, um, just for more about our department, we provide a RAD program. It's a comprehensive men and women self-defense course that mentally, physically prepares an individual to handle, you know, danger, potentially dangerous situations. Um, it's a great course we're going to be offering it this year. Um, another, we, another service we offer is campus escort program, uh, where we have a police and or security officer provide walking escorts to and from any building owned, used, or leased um, by Suffolk University. Uh, if you're in an area you don't feel safe in, you can just call our department um, and we'll provide a walking escort for you. And another thing we have that's great uh, for our university that provides a direct line to us and your location and things like that is uh, the Live Safe application. So the Live Safe application, you can receive crime tips, or we can receive crime tips from any smartphone device. Live Safe is available to any community member free of charge, and it may be downloaded to the App Store or Google Play. Live Safe is more than a crime tip system. It allows users to call emergency phone numbers, look up Suffolk University's resources, it enables a safe walk system, which allows users to ask a friend to watch them walk as they travel from one location to another and make sure they arrive safely, which is a really cool feature. So if you're walking from one dorm room to a, you know, uh, another dorm room to meet a friend and you 
want to enable the safe walk feature, it uses the GPS on your phone and sets like a 10 minute time limit, for example, from you go to point A to point B. Um, if you don't go to that um, point B location within the set time frame, um, we will get notified and we'll send an officer as well as your friend will get notified. Um, so if anything happens, we'll be there um, to hopefully assist you. Um, a little bit more on the Live Safe app. Um, it enables direct and discrete two-way communication with our police department. You can use text, picture, video, and audio. Um, it lets you virtually walk with your friends and family home with Safe Walk, kind of like what I just mentioned with the Safe Walk feature. Uh, it lets people to monitor lets people monitor you as you um, walk to location A to B. Um, and if you want to report a crime that you you know may be actively seeing. Um, a past crime, or you want to let us know there's a noise complaint or anything like that, you can use the picture, video, and audio feature, which is really great. So it helps our officers upon arrival to um, identify your concern and let us address it appropriately. Um, so here's here where you can see where to download it on the Google Play or App Store. Um, you tell us you have to do is register your mobile phone number and fill out the profile. Um, you verify your account through the email and you select Suffolk University. So it's tied right into our system. Here is how to contact us, um, our non-emergency line and our emergency line. And then if you're off campus, um, dial 911. Um, and let's say if you're off campus and a couple blocks away from a Suffolk building, you still dial 911, uh, Boston Police, and we will get notified. So we will show up as well. Um, any emergencies on campus, um, you can hit extension 8111 and non-emergency questions or inquiries would be extension 8333 on a campus phone. Um, we have our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter um, accounts. Um, there's the handles there. Uh, we post a lot of safety um, things like throughout the city, like Uber, Lyft safety tips, um, as well as uh, different alerts that need to come out as well throughout um, the school year. And that is it for me, so. Thank you so much. No um, for all of the students that are listening, we are not expecting you to fall victim to a housing scam, but we do want to make sure that you know what to look for. And this is because when you start searching for housing in Boston, you're going to get a lot of options. And sometimes that might feel a little overwhelming to know what's the best option, what is real, what is not real. All the phone numbers and contact information that Sergeant Sweet provided, we will share with you again during our live in-person orientation at the end of August. And we share it at that time again, because I know a few of you will be getting a US cell phone at that time. So don't worry, you will save those numbers on your phone. I also know that a lot of you are currently going to be looking for off-campus housing. And Sergeant Sweet mentioned that there is an off-campus housing website that Suffolk University approves of. I'm going to actually let Shigeo talk about that website and how to use it. Over to you, Shigeo. All right. So I am going to go over our off-campus housing website and I'm gonna do a screen share and actually demonstrate how to actually go from not knowing anything about Boston to try to find an apartment. And I won't actually be able to do that in 10 minutes, but I will go through the steps to do that so that you can actually sort of see and research and have a little fun in that process too. Okay, so I'm gonna screen share this website here. Um, okay, so let's go back one step. So what you will see here is if you go to offcampushousing.suffolk.edu. That's off campus, O-F-F-C-A-M-P-U-S, housing, H-O-U-S-I-N-G, dot suffolk.edu, you will land on this page. And it will say, welcome to the Suffolk University off-campus housing website. And you, you do not need to sign in to view the rentals. So if it will say view rentals and you can look for them. And I'm just gonna do that right now. I'll click on view rentals and I'll show you um, 
it's a little slow today. Um, it will show you all the, these blue dots are all the available apartments all over the place. And what you can do, and Sergeant um, Sweet or Matt earlier was talking about how to avoid scams, meaning apartments that are not real, that are posted, um, that they might try to say, hey, if you want this apartment, pay us $1,200 or $1,200 ahead um, in order to secure. And those are, the, those are the signs of scams um, when people are asking for money before you even get a chance to talk to somebody or, or see the apartment virtually or anything like that. And so <clears throat> if they ask you to send money ahead or deposit money into a wire account, meaning a bank transfer, or even sometimes they'll be so creative, they'll say, send Visa gift cards um, as a way to say, hey, we can sort of, that way you don't have to go through the bank and you can buy them and send it to me or just send me the password. Um, and th they get very creative of how to quote unquote trick people into sending money. So please don't send money ahead. Even if you do end up talking to a scam person, if you don't send in any money, it'll be okay because technically you haven't lost anything. But once you do send money, it is very, very hard to track um, where they are. However, the one good side thing about not finding scams or finding apartments that are not scams is this apartment, this website is um, vetted or we've checked all the apartments that are posted on here. So there are no possible scams on this. Um, we've actually only worked with credible renters on this site. And so you can feel very secure and safe going to this site um, and booking an apartment or, or even making a contact with an apartment. So um, you can search for apartments this way. So, oops. My mouse accidentally zoomed out here, but um, so let's just come zoom back in here to Boston. Um, so as you can see, this is this is Boston here. You can't see because all the blue dots right now, but that says Boston right there. You can see the B right there. And then there's a neighborhood called Cambridge. Earlier we were talking about Jaws, but also movies like Goodwill Hunting were filmed here in Cambridge. Um, and then neighborhood cities like Brookline or Somerville or Chelsea um, or East Boston are all part of this um, search engine as well. So for example, if you say, and, and you can't see this, but let me zoom in even further, this um, sort of gray thing with the um, Greek pillar looking icons um, is Suffolk University. That's showing where the university is. So that means let's just click on one of these apartments. It says fantastic two bedroom um, bath apartment. It's two beds for 3,900. It's not my first choice of a pr price that I would pick, but I'm gonna click on it anyway, because it's the closest one to Suffolk University. And so you can click on the blue dot and you can click on the here, and then it will just go straight to the apartment and show you pictures and all sorts of things as well. It shows the bathroom, rooms. These are be beautiful floors here, um, but it will kind of go through and show you some pictures. Also, it will show you the uh, rent. Um, it's max occupants, meaning you can only have up to four people in this um, apartment, meaning it's a two bathroom with four residents. So for example, if three, you and three friends or three people that you meet during orientation through virtual sessions, say, hey, four of us could live together for $3,900 a month, um, and it's available now, that roughly comes out to about $1,000 per resident, um, but it's two bedrooms for four people, so that means that two people are sharing bedrooms because four divided by two is two, and so that means that two people are living in each um, um, bedroom. So if you can see, it's a convenient location for faculty, staff, graduate students, or undergraduate students. Sometimes apartments will not list undergraduate students. So if that means that 
undergraduate, it, that means that some units will not rent to undergraduate students, mostly because undergraduate students are stereotypically younger than graduate students and sometimes maybe more noisy or less clean. Um, and so you always wanna check to see if it's um, listing for graduates or undergraduate students. And then it'll go through all the information about the apartment and having in-unit laundry and all the other kind of things, but also um, upfront requirements. This is what um, Sergeant Sweet was talking about. It looks like for $3,900, there's a first month, last month, there's a broker free and an agent broker listing upfront requirements. This could mean that all four of these payments are $3,900, which means that is an upfront cost of almost $16,000. So you have to think, and when you put all four people together, maybe that's really doable, but you must think about the upfront cost um, of the apartment. Now, that also means your first month rent is covered and your last month rent is covered. So eventually it sort of, um, sort of equals out a little bit more, but is very, very expensive in the beginning of the apartment leasing period. And as it goes on, it gets cheaper and cheaper. So just think about that, okay? So whenever every apartment will list upfront requirements, always think about that. You want to find an upfront requirement um, and I will show you in a couple seconds how to do that, that doesn't list a broker fee if possible, because that means that will save you so much more money in the very, very beginning. So here's the expenses, um, water, sewer, they're all included, so you don't have to pay for that. Um, but that means that electricity is not, Wi-Fi is not, cable is not, so think about all the things that you would need, but you do not have to pay extra for water or sewer. Um, sewer is basically um, your um, removal of um, bathroom and all sorts of um, sewer charges, um, which you would think that is always included and it almost always is, but sometimes there's a special fee attached to that um, as well. So please keep that in mind when you're looking at expenses. Um, uh, Shigeo, we had yes. a question that popped in. Yeah. Someone is wondering, how much does it normally cost for utilities each month? So that can vary on the apartment size. So this is a two bedroom, two bath apartment. So my guess is that electricity would probably be within the $100 to $150 range for all four people. So by the time you split it, it would probably be no more than $50. However, if it was a four bedroom house um, and it was a larger property, um, I would say that it could go up to 200, maybe 300. Sometimes during the summer months, if air conditioning is on, you know, obviously things can cost a little bit more um, when those things are included. So please keep in mind, but usually uh, it's about $100 and $150 a month for a college apartment. Um, if you have a larger college apartment and you're sharing it with more people, the cost would potentially go up a little bit higher, but you might be able to split it with more people. So if you can, if you can probably um, add about $50 to $100 a month for utilities, that is usually a good, um, sort of barometer of how much that would cost. And also um, by the time you add things like Wi-Fi or cable, uh, cable TV, those are things, you know, obviously cable TV is not a necessity, but Wi-Fi is certainly a necessity because if you try to live one day without Wi-Fi and probably, you know, homework, um, Netflix, everything like that is gone. So just remember, um, always try to see if you can get Wi-Fi. And usually Wi-Fi is, if uh, you can contract with a company like Comcast or Verizon here in Massachusetts, um, and there'll be tons of information. Once you do actually sign an apartment, 
we can help you with identifying um, those companies to get you connected with as well. Um, amenities, always check the amenities, dishwasher, um, washer, dryer, and unit. These are very um, rare in Massachusetts. A lot of times, or at least in Boston, I should say, um, a lot of times you, you might have to think about taking your wash um, laundry to a dry cleaner or a um, washer dryer in the um, basement of the building. Um, so always think about these things as um, amenities that are um, beneficial to having um, in the unit as well. Shabir, um, sorry, one more yes. question popped in. Yeah. Um, when you look at apartments, is mm -hmm. it common for apartments to have a kitchen and bathroom? Yes. So for apartments, kitchen and bathrooms are almost 100% included. Um, kitchens are, I mean, I have never seen an off-campus apartment that did not come with a kitchen. Um, unless it was a off-campus apartment sort of building that had a communal kitchen, but it almost, almost felt like a youth hostel or something like that. That is possible. But most off-campus apartments that are, you have your key and you can walk up to a building and open an apartment almost always comes with a kitchen and certainly always comes with a bathroom. That is, I, I think Massachusetts law um, that every um, apartment must have a bathroom. We, we can't let you rent something that you can't go to the bathroom um, because that would not be hygienic whatsoever. So most apartments, not most, almost all apartments will have a kitchen and every apartment will have a bathroom, sometimes more, um, sometimes more than one bathroom, sometimes they have two bathrooms. Um, so this, this apartment is two bedroom, two full bath. So that means that there's two apartment, uh, two bedrooms and two bathrooms included, which is a great, great um, sort of convenience for a lot of people when you can, when you have two bathrooms that are attached. So, um, as you can see, it talks about where you can go shopping, um, colleges within 10 miles. It says three minute, um, 1.3 miles to Suffolk University, all sorts of universities. Um, and then also it, it's talking about all the subway stations that are close by, all the parks that are close by. Um, and then if you do have children, um, it talks about all the public schools that are located um, close by so that you can sort of think about, okay, if I live here, if I have a child, where can my son or daughter or child go? Um, and it can certainly talk about that as well. So let me go back to our main page for a second um, and come back. And I'm gonna show you something that um, if you have your Suffolk username and password, you can sign in here using the Suffolk community members page and you will be able to sign in with your Suffolk username and password. I'll show you that in a second. If you Perfect. don't have- yes. I'll just add one thing. For students that do not have your Suffolk University credentials, yep. you will receive these credentials after you have confirmed your offer to study yes. at Into Suffolk. So that's step one. And then after you confirm your offer, you'll get an email from me with information about how to access your Suffolk credentials. And on top of that, we certainly want you to confirm and come to Suffolk because we love having more students here. So we're really excited. But if you wanted to get a head start and don't have Suffolk.edu email address, you can come through and create a guest account over here and we can approve your guest account for 60 days. Um, and then after the 60 days, it will automatically um, discontinue. Um, and hopefully by then you'll have your Suffolk email, then you can come through this way. So I have my Suffolk email, so I'm gonna click here and here I am and I'm gonna log in and here I am. And it says Shigeo, so that's, I'm, I'm in here right now. So I'm gonna click on roommates. And so if you were looking to find a roommate as well, and it looks like there's 549 roommates found, you can go through and look, and if you're just saying, hey, I don't, I wanna live somewhere in Boston, but I don't exactly know where I want to live yet, and I wanna live with another graduate student, you can actually search through this way and say, I have a place, I need a place, meaning I, 
I'm already living somewhere and I need to live somewhere else, or I need a place, meaning I'm still looking for an apartment um, and I can join a place, uh, meaning like I will be in a group with you so we can look together. When am I looking? Am I looking for fall semester now? meaning summer, now and summer, pretty much the same thing right now. And then also, if you are looking for a um, graduate or professional, you can click on here where it says, I'm only looking for graduate students or I'm only looking for um, doctoral students or postgraduate students. And you can click on these populations to um, connect with different people as well. If you notice one thing, if you've noticed on the screen over here, for example, let's click on Zev right here. I don't know anything about Zev. However, he is a Tufts University student. Our university is, this website is designed so that you can, you can search through multiple university students um, because we don't, we have a partnership agreement with all of these universities that you can live with other university students. So it doesn't have to be only Suffolk students. So you could, however, search just Suffolk students, I believe. Um, however, um, Boston University, University of Massachusetts, Boston, um, up here is Suffolk University. Um, so you can actually search based on different personalities um, and age and whatever you would kind of think of. Here's another Pablo, another Suffolk University student. Hello, my name is Pablo. I'm a business and economic student from Chile and I will do my exchange semester at Suffolk University. So as you can see, they write a little bit about them and they try to look, look for other people. So I encourage you to come in, take a look, make new friends. Um, and try to engage with other people through this page too, to figure out if you might want to live with other people. So those are the two ways to search for apartments. One, you can find the people and kind of connect with people and try to see if you can make a new friend or make a new roommate um, friend um, and go from there. Or you can simply go through the housing search page and search on this. One little quick one tidbit here, I know that we're pushing time, so I want to make sure that I save some time here. Um, when you are here, and these are all um, price uh, filters that you can apply. So let's just say you wanted to apply a price of $1,000 to $1,400. And this is monthly charges. Um, you can apply that, and now it eliminates all of the properties that are not um, within that guideline and only will show certain sort of um, locations that fit, fit that criteria. If you go to more, you will be able to do, do we want a 12 month lease? Do we want a short term lease? Do you want a two year lease? Um, do you want, um, it, it needs to be near a bus stop. If you have a dog or a cat, make sure you click on some um, features. Do you want a, um, fireplace. Ooh, let's try that. Let's fireplace. Okay, there's one out here in Somerville that has a fireplace that's within 1,000 to 1,400. So as you can see, um, you want to try to see if you can um, narrow down as many things as possible. Um, international student friendly, that's a feature that you can add as well. And so um, have fun with it. It's like a gigantic puzzle and you try to figure out something. And if you do not have, I'm gonna stop share right now. Um, if you do not have, um, if you have more questions, you can always email us at reslife, R-E-S-L-I-F-E -E, at suffolk.edu. I think Sophie's gonna put it in the chat for us right now. Um, and you can email us and we can answer any questions that you would have to support your off-campus housing. Again, that's R-E-S-L-I-F-E -E at suffolk.edu. So that's, a, that's, that's about our off-campus website. Well, thank you so much, Shigeo. That was uh, very, very detailed and I know very helpful, especially I love the option where students can find potential roommates as well. Yeah. Uh, we've reached the part of our presentation today where we have some time set aside for questions. 
So once again, you are welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question, or you can type it in the chat. And I'm also just going to share my screen. We have uh, contact information we talked about earlier. Let's see here. Can you all see my contact us screen? I believe so. Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you are someone like me, where if someone asks me, do you have a question? I'm going to say, not now, but I probably will have a question maybe an hour from now. Um, you can always contact any one of us. There's a bunch of different phone numbers and emails that we shared, but a good email to start with is our into at suffolk.edu email address. This email goes to myself and my team. I work really closely with our presenters today. And so any questions related to, is this a housing scam? Or how do I use the filters in the off-campus Suffolk housing portal? If you send them to me, I'll be able to send it to the right person at our university to help answer. I do encourage you, if you are starting your program with us this fall semester, to start looking at off-campus housing now. So the earlier you begin your search, the more options you'll have to choose from. You don't wanna be in a position where you start orientation in one week and you realize you don't have a place to live when you come into Boston. So please start searching now, create an account at the off-campus housing portal website. And if you wanna do your own searching, using other platforms, just be mindful of the information that was shared about housing scams and how to identify them. And it looks like we have a question that came in. Ah, so one question is, if a student arrives to Boston and they are not 18 years old when they arrive, what can they do regarding housing? All of the into Suffolk undergraduate students are required to live on campus, which means it's an easy answer. They'll be living in the resident halls. And if they live in the resident halls, that means they do not have to search for housing. They have a room guaranteed for them. The room has furniture. They'll have a bed pack when they arrive. And students will also get that free airport transportation from Boston Logan Airport to their resident hall room. Remember, living on campus is a requirement for undergraduate students. If you are a graduate student, you will be living off campus. Great, so keep an eye on time. Once again, please don't forget to email us if you have any additional questions. I want to thank our guests today, Sergeant Sweet and then Shigeo for presenting to our students today. For all of our students attending, I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thank you, everyone.